Hello there. Uh, my name is Gary Staniforth, and in 2008, I was sat in the centre of Bradford with nothing but a bin liner um, after a 17 year relationship um, that I pretty much ruined. Um, I'll give you a bit about my past. I was um, spent three years in care. Um, my dad was quite a bit of a drinker, quite abusive. Um, sexually abused as a kid at 10 year old by a neighbour. And then I was labelled as maladjusted um, and sent into care. When I left care, I thought I was pretty much fixed and sorted. I settled down um, with a woman, had, some, had two kids and got a job as a car sales exec and worked for 13 years. Um, nearly six, seven days a week and, and, and did really, really well selling cars. Um, I was earning quite a bit of money. We had you know, two cars, a motorbike, three holidays a year, kids were at dance school, so I pretty much had life boxed off. But like I say, in 2008, um, I ended up with nothing. So how did I end up with nothing? Um, the car trade um, in 1989 fell flat. Um, so I went from earning 35 to 40 grand a year to earning 13 grand a year and my outgoings were 25. So I needed a way of sub, you know, subsidising my income. I got in touch with some old friends that uh, I knew from past that were into drugs at the time. Um, and they were selling drugs and making a few quid and I needed to keep my family above water. Um, so I got into selling drugs. Um, within. Within six months, I wasn't just selling drugs, I was taking drugs. I got into cocaine. Uh, my life just fell apart in no time flat. Um, I got into a lifestyle. That lasted for six years. Um, needless to say, you know, the, the marriage had fallen apart. Um, my life just fell apart. Got into some serious scrapes. And like I said, in 2008, I walked away from everything and everyone and decided to sort my life out. Um, you know, got a divorce, and I was living in Salvation Army, and I found out that homeless legislation, um, I just thought I just needed rehousing at the time, you know, and so I could sort my life out. And I found out that that wasn't gonna happen. I was living in Salvation Army, and I, could be, I found out I could be there for 18 months. I thought, I'm not sitting here for 18 months. I've got children I want to recontact with, and um, I found it really difficult. So I sat on City Hall steps with some cardboard slogans, and sat there for six weeks, from morning till night, um, until I got rehoused. Um, I was collecting signatures, um, over 300 signatures I got to sign a petition. Because homeless legislation stated that unless I fit their certain criteria, I wasn't going to get any support. There was no duty of care towards me because I were a single, single man. Um, so I sat there. And then I started getting involved with Bradford Council after I'd done this speech in council chambers. I got involved with Bradford Council and homeless services and strategic bodies. Because everything I had to say in the speech I'd written to council chambers was, was, was true and right. Um, so I got involved with the homeless services. And while I was living at Salvation Army, everybody I seemed to speak to had, had very similar backgrounds to myself. You know, they'd been through care or they'd been abused or neglected. Um, had quite chaotic backgrounds. Um, so I figured that, you know, something's got to be done. So, and I wanted to give people a voice. It seems like everybody who was homeless was given, or stuck in a, a little box and they were all well, no good. They're either druggies or alkies or bums and, and dossers. And it was like, that's really not the case. You know, these people have been through things that you just wouldn't believe. I thought I had it rough as a kid, but these people have been, you know, abused and neglected from day one, and it's, it's horrendous, some of the stuff I hear. Um, so I set up a magazine called Hidden Voices, and the Hidden Voices magazine gives people a voice uh, that were homeless. And now we, you know, from that, The Secret Millionaire recognised the magazine in 2012. Um, and surprised myself by giving us £28,000 to develop the magazine further. We were doing some creative writing sessions um, and getting people to, to share their life experiences in the magazine and, and trying to break down the stigma of what it meant to be homeless. And from that we developed a service. Um, and then in 2013 uh, we started looking at life coaching um, and mentoring. 
and doing some drug and alcohol re recovery stuff. We got in touch with a woman that could help us write a bid for, to the big lottery and in 2000, in fact this 18 months ago, we received a quarter of a million pound to deliver these workshops, which not only um, works with homeless but works with any vulnerable adult. So yeah, so through the life coaching process we take people that, you know, are in the depths of despair, thinking, the, the negative thinking, you know, the decision they make when they're in that sort of chaotic lifestyle and that negative thought process is, is, never, is never the way to go. You know, the, we cause a lot of problems for ourselves. And we get them to think differently, we get them to, sh to show them, we get, to get them to set small goals that builds up their self-esteem, their confidence, and get them to, you know, to start looking at a future rather than, you know, dwelling on the past. And, and worrying about you know the guilt and shame of, of where they've been, and start looking at you know how they can move forward and and, and become independent again, and, and join and rejoin society if you like. And it's working really, really well. We're getting some fantastic outcomes. We now work with social services, probation, um, you know, homeless services, uh, you know, drug and alcohol services, and we are we're getting some. We're the only we're the only ones that are starting to look at the cause rather than the symptoms. Everybody seems to be treating the symptoms and nobody's treating the cause and the cause really is us. It's, you know, we're, we're damaged if you like. You know, and in these groups we share life experience, you know, and because, you know, myself and the life coach, we've both got, you know, we've both got a background, you know, with some, you know, abuse and neglect, you know, in there. But, you know, we share that experience with, with the clients that we work with. And, you know, for me to share my story with, with the people we work with, it, it just breaks down the walls, the barriers that people have up. You know, there is we get people to open up, you know, and they tell us all they tell us anything and everything. And and because we, we're passionate about what we're doing, you know, they see that and they can see that if I can if I can achieve the things I've achieved, you know, and turn my life around at forty, then, you know, anybody can do it. You know, and I love what I'm doing. You know, it's not it's not about money, it's about people. And that's what, it, you know, I think that's what's missing within within the services. You know, people just don't understand that they're not, these, we're not just working with alcoholics, we're not just working with drug addicts, we're working with people. And that's what's forgotten, I think, in most of the services out there. We're just doing it a bit different. And it, we're coming from a compassionate background. Um, you know, to end up as a chief exec of a charity, that's, that's changing lives is payment enough for me. That's, it, you know, to see somebody go from suicidal, having suicidal thoughts and being isolated and lonely to engaging with people and life and, and getting a job and, and moving forward. That, you can't beat that, that's a payment. That's, you know, that, that makes it for me. I suppose the reason I got involved with this film is is because you know it's time that we started doing films that showed you know who these people are not you know you see people sat, sat on the street homeless people sat on the street and, and people just walk straight past and, and they look at down the noses and they think oh it's just another druggie or just another alky but you know you've got to remember that these are these are people and, and they've got they've got backgrounds that you have no idea what they've been through you know there's a reason there's a reason they sat there, you know, drinking themselves to death. There's a reason the man's sticking a needle in his arm. You know, it's it, that didn't just happen. They didn't choose to do that. It just became. It just happened. You know, they got into that, and you know, and it was to to dull one pain or another. You know, so you know, I'm hoping this will break down some stigma. Um, you know, and that, I'm really passionate about that because you know you can't judge a book by its cover. You know, don't judge anybody that you. Know, you haven't got a clue what they've been through, you know. So next time you look at a homeless person that's sat on the street, just think, you know, maybe that could have been your brother, your sister, you know, your mum, your dad, your uncle. Could have been any of those. Because homelessness happens to anyone, you know. Despair happens to anyone at any time. Okay. Educated fools with swimming pools. Fleet Street's financial elite. I've no idea what it's like on the street. Silver spoons, loving cocoons, living in your plastic balloons. Looking down your upper class noses, way up high on beds of roses. Bigoted opinions of us fair minions, while living off the family's millions. 
wind and dine, so refined. Here now we to be so kind. Wake up call, here it comes. Life for me it starts like this. Beatings off for dad that's pissed. First a belt and then a fist. There you go, get the gist. Social workers here and there, send him away off to care. A school for delinquents, a school of hard knocks. The place we learn life's building blocks. Unrefined, anger defined, insecure minds, unloved, mistreated and misunderstood. These are designs of a lost neighbourhood. I visited your fair city of plastic and I learned so very much. I saw the way you trek my friends but now I'm back in touch. Fat cats in blue suits expect us to stay mute. Well time has come to be astute and fight the things that we refute. I know you never listen but now I shine and glisten. Forty years it's taken for me to finally waken. Life's my education, I pass with commendation. I speak for hidden voices with very little choices who sit in isolation with anger and frustration about discrimination. Enough is enough. Surely, Mr. Cameron, surely you can see there are thousands of you, but millions of me, deprived and mistreated by the powers that be. Homeless and hopeless, but not all the same. Some of us failed after playing the game. Some fell to drugs, some fell to drink. Some of us teeter on life's very brink. Lost in confusion, you promise inclusion in a society that's broken. You've got to be joking. The blame lives with you, the bankers and broken.